Meanwhile, Rome was plunged into panic. The city divided between Republicans and supporters of Caesar. According to the plebes, a god had been murdered and Rome was doomed. People feared a bloodbath. Cleopatra, renowned mistress of Caesar and pregnant with his son, discovered the terrible news and, like Antony, saw her world crumble. A few hours after the assassination, Antony learned that Caesar's murderers had foreseen no replacement system of governance. The senator's plan stopped at killing the tyrant. Rome's seat of power was vacant, an opportunity Antony had to seize. The city slept beneath a blanket of fear, of civil war. Antony managed to call a meeting at a very agitated Senate. Tension was palpable between the assassins and supporters of Caesar. Seditiones populus Romanus factorus est. Murmurat enimi minakve jactad multitudo. Kwe etiam vos atkwe domos vestras, cognatosque familiasque, pugnare potest. Equidem nullum aliud consilium nisi mali vestri impediendi dineo. Caveto vero plebem dolentem, kwe subito patrem perdiderit, atquat arma capienda paratissima essit. Ile kie tanta beneficia dederat iam oxissus es. Etiam. Vobis aut perfugium querre, aut morte timere necesse est. Vobis rustice ville sunt in quasiam vos guerre utile sint. Ego te brutte bene novi, nec dubito que pro virtute in qua tibi nihil sit optatius libertatem. Ita egeris und hang vindicare, nec vap illo abhorere volueris. Itaquem, sentio senatu consultum fiat, ut et omnibus coniurationis principibus venia atque impunitas detur. Et omnia acta Caesaris rata sint. Tuc fidem qui acta Caesara abrogantur sentis, num quesistis quis ad magistratum tibi mandaset. Cuius, ex autoritate hunc honorem recepsices. Cuius ex munere magnificam domum in quatanta convivia libentera parares. Equidem aperte loc for animum vestro appello. Nisi omnia acta Caesaris rata erunt. Omnes pleracque et magistratus perdemus. Quanam autoritate sit ita sit. De Republica, de Civitate, de populo romano statuatis. Crebriores in dies conveniunt Caesari veterani, ac fibus terras rei publice redendas esse. Cum abrogata iam sit ilios acta qui has dona verit, fis autem vestrum pallam, is dicere audeat. Antoine revient de loin, il est certain qu'il aurait pu euh, périr après la mort de César, c'est même euh, ce qu'il craignait. Il perçoit la mort de César comme une catastrophe pour lui, parce qu'il euh, doit toute sa carrière à César et il est certain que, euh, dans son esprit, que César mort, euh, eh bien sa carrière va s'arrêter. Les chefs de la conjuration, euh, tout le monde les connaît, c'est Brutus et Cassius. Brutus, pour trop pour lui, non est un soldat, est un philosophe, est un... Euh grande senatore 
è eh, un uomo è un uomo d'onore direbbe, direbbe Shakespeare l'un euh, était véritablement euh, un tueur le, avec sa, la bande à Cassius hein, comme on disait dès l'antiquité et euh, l'autre était le euh, symbole de la vertu euh, républicaine Antony had avoided a civil war, making him, in the eyes of many, the man who re-established public peace. Filled with great confidence, he demanded the reading of Caesar's will. Amici, implica leggere. Antony had lived and fought alongside Caesar. He was a military genius who Caesar had left to govern Italy in his absence. He therefore had good reason to hope to be strongly favored in Caesar's will. Gaius Julius Caesar, sororis sua inipotem Gaium Octavium, eredem sum ex dodrante instituit. Preterea inimacera Gaium Octavium etiam in familiam nomenque adoptat. Populo autem romano, ortos suos circa tiberim citos publice legat. Antoine a sans doute été déçu. Le contenu du testament était loin d'être à la hauteur de ses espoirs. César marque nettement sa préférence pour Octave, son petit neveu, qui est tout juste âgé de 18 ans. Et il s'est pris d'affection pour lui six mois plus tôt, apparemment en le couchant quelque sorte sur son testament. Cette adoption totalement secrète laisse penser que César envisageait de modifier ce testament, écrit en septembre 45. Il pouvait encore avoir un fils de sa chair, ou même vouloir d'un autre héritier. Quelles que furent ses intentions, il n'eut pas le temps de rédiger un nouveau testament, ne pensant pas être assassiné. C'est un testament privé. Euh, on ne peut pas parler d'héritage politique dans la mesure où Rome est encore une république et donc euh, César n'est pas un, un roi susceptible de pouvoir léguer euh, un royaume à des héritiers. Caesar's funeral would serve as the ideal occasion for Antony to convince Rome that he was the rightful guardian of Caesar's heritage. Si Cezar privatus mortuus esset. Magnis orationibus non mihi opus esset. Set quoniam et ille in sumo imperio perit, et ego etiam consulantum gero. Nullas resquedicente sunt tacere de beo. Certer pater ille, Canvis Pontifex Maximus, Sacrosanctus, Vir Magnus, Divus, Tamen ab Amicis, A Civibus Oxisus Est, Vam Nullus Hostis Interficere Potuerat. Fit opus fuit telenitate tua, o Cezar. Quid sacro sanctitate, quid legibus. De crudelissime ab amicis oxissum esse. O dolorem, o cruorem a cano capillo stilantem. Ola 
Nazera Tantogam. Pan nulla razione vestivisse videris. Nisi ut in ea ferum reciperes. Periovem. Rome custodem. Per celestes deos. Juro. Iusurandum do. Me cesaris mortem. Per ste culturum esse. At the end of his speech, Antony approached the improvised funeral pyre. Swept up in a fervor, the crowd set fire to the pyre and threw on arms, clothes, and jewelry, setting the premises of Caesar worship. Alors, au moment des funérailles de César, il va jouer un jeu extrêmement ambigu et très habile. Il n'appelle pas à la vengeance, mais ça revient exactement au même parce qu'il provoque la colère du peuple euh, qui est furieux de l'ingratitude des meurtriers de César. Faced with the vindictiveness of the people, Brutus and Cassius were forced to flee Rome, leaving the path clear for Antony. But they weren't the only ones to depart. Someone else had already gone before them. Cleopatra returned to Egypt. Cléopâtre, reine d'Égypte, a bien des raisons de quitter Rome. Lors de l'assassinat de Jules César, elle a à la fois perdu son amant et le protecteur de son royaume. The kingdom of Egypt was the most important country in the East, the granary of the Mediterranean. Alexandria was rivaled by Rome alone and was proud of its port, the biggest in the world. Cleopatra was free-thinking and intelligent. She knew she was under threat. Elle a au moins trois défauts aux yeux des Romains. C'est une femme et ils sont misogynes. C'est une reine et la monarchie est très mal vue à Rome. Et puis c'est une étrangère et ils sont un peu xénophobes, surtout avec les orientaux. La peur de représailles à son encontre, mêlée au souci de protéger la vie de son fils et la préservation de son royaume, était autant de motifs qui la poussaient à partir. Cléopâtre a alors 25 ans. At the same time, Caesar's heir arrived in Rome. Ecce Caius Iulius Caesar Octavianus. Octave et Antoine ne s'apprécient pas du tout. Plus exactement, euh, ils ont. Euh, des rapports euh, qui sont euh, d'emblée euh, très froids. Lors de sa première rencontre avec Antoine, Octave adopte une attitude modeste. Il a 20 ans de moins euh, qu'Antoine et ce dernier le traite avec condescendance, le désigne comme celui qui doit tout à un nom. Il l'appelle aussi le petit jeune homme. Octavian was ambitious. He launched propaganda against Antony, flattered senators, bought off veterans and sapped the morale of the legions. He handed out donations financed by his father's inheritance to form his own party and army, asserting his qualities as an adopted son. Octavian was just 19 years old. For a year and a half, Brutus and Cassius, still wary of Rome, rallied their legions in the east. Brutus took control in Greece and Macedonia Cassius in Syria. They hired all the old soldiers they met, raised heavy tributes, and established a domain which would enable them to see off their enemies in case of conflict. Neque tributi scolati te pecunia. Disgratia sagamus, qui tantaste ribelesco copias. 
pro iure a Republica Nobis Dederi. Faced with a growing Republican threat, Antony joined forces with Octavian despite their marked differences. They formed a triumvirate with Marcus Aemilius Lepidus, Caesar's main lieutenant. This, the so-called second triumvirate, was a legally established authority with power to be shared between the three men for a period of five years. Avenging Caesar was the surest way of maintaining this power. Avant d'accomplir cette mission, Antoine et Octavien s'occupent des ennemis de l'intérieur, en quelque sorte, et font exécuter leurs opposants. C'est ce qu'on appelle la proscription, sous forme d'affiches portant les noms des condamnés à mort, qui sèment la terreur parmi les sénateurs et les chevaliers. Many of the proscribed were stripped of their assets, and new taxes were levied, which provided the money needed to confront the Republicans. Panic swept through the aristocracy, causing many of them to flee Rome. The alliance between Antony and Octavian unleashed a reign of terror. From then on, they would be known as the Caesarians. They went in search of Brutus and Cassius across the Adriatic from Brindisium to Dyrrachium, then onwards to the plain west of Philippi in Greece. Antony and his legions were first to seek out the Republicans, quick marching his men over 500 kilometers in 10 days to the great surprise of their enemies. Treated as brothers in arms, his troops pushed on, surpassing their limits. Antony, Rome's greatest warrior, was therefore ready to cross swords with the powerful legions of Caesar's assassins and to deliver a merciless battle on the plain of Philippi. Urged on by their leader, a model of high esteem and worthiness, Antony's legions eagerly embraced the cause, in spite of facing fellow Romans. Brutus and Cassius took up position on high ground close to the town of Philippi. Brutus's camp was protected by dense forest and steep embankments. While that of Cassius was bordered by a seemingly impassable marsh. Antony set up camp two kilometers away, making do with the desolation of the plain. The two Republican camps sat either side of the Via Egnata, the only road that crossed the Eastern Roman Empire. From one camp to the other, Brutus and Cassius blocked the road with a rampart and ditch. About 10 kilometers away was the port of Neapolis, facilitating communications and refitting. The well-supplied and well-protected Republicans would be capable of waging a drawn-out war while the Caesarians had no water and no nearby towns. Antony asked Cleopatra for help. She was to send a hundred ships to Neapolis with reinforcements. Antony could then establish access to the sea, which was indispensable for resupplying his troops.
Cassius built a huge palisade ahead of his camp to protect his forces. He believed the natural lie of the marshland offered further protection to the south. Antony knew he had to breach Cassius' palisade. In under 10 days, he secretly built a causeway across the supposedly impassable marshes, which would enable him to go round the palisade and attack Cassius on several fronts. Le plus dangereux des deux adversaires entre Brutus et Cassius, c'est évidemment Cassius. Cassius a une expérience militaire incontestable que n'a pas Brutus. Brutus n'a pas d'expérience militaire. Cassius, c'est un vieux routier de l'armée et euh, c'est la raison pour laquelle Antoine décide de s'attaquer en priorité à lui. But Antony wasn't alone. He had been joined by the young Octavian and his legions. His mission was to lead a charge on Brutus's camp. If only he hadn't felt so weak. Octavian had arrived on a stretcher two days earlier. Antony gave out battle orders. Octavian was to attack Brutus. But Octavian showed no signs of recovering from the illness he was stricken with since leaving Rome. His physician reminded him of a nightmare he'd had, a bad omen. If he went into combat, the outcome would be fatal. India è una guerra terribile, crudele, condotta da due eserciti che tra l'altro combattono nella stessa maniera. Sono leggermente diverse le componenti all'interno, ma sono, sono cittadini romani gli uni, gli uni e gli altri. Le forze che si fronteggiano sotto Filippi sono forze enormi. Sono 19 legioni con intorno ai 17.000 cavalieri le forze di Antonio e Ottaviano, sono 17 legioni con un numero maggiore di cavalieri, circa 20.000 cavalieri, le forze di eh, Bruto e Cassio. Mm, sono circa equilibrate, circa 100.000 uomini per parte. Antony managed to breach the palisade and could engage the enemy in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Utinam aeta temperagamus, si vero adversa pugna ewonia, utrum fugere ad mori maletis, e quidea mutoria mostium non timet. At the same time, Brutus attacked the Caesarian camp. Octavian was nowhere to be seen. Given the little resistance offered, Brutus easily took the camp. Milites Romani, propagator, ut Caesaris caidem, persec pamur. Antony decided to split his cavalry into two groups. The first was to cut off his enemy's infantry, while the second, led by Antony, led a charge on Cassius's camp. Antony won an astounding victory, fulfilling all his aims. 
draw Cassius into combat, breach the palisade, and capture the camp. Brutus too was victorious. He had taken the Caesarian camp. But Cassius had been mistaken. Worse, he had believed Brutus captured. Cassius a mal apprécié la situation, probablement en raison de l'opacité des fumées du combat. Il perd la vie stupidement à 45 ans, le jour de son anniversaire. Il était réputé pour son autorité, sa sévérité. Il avait toutes les cimes de ses troupes qu'il commandait avec une extrême discipline. C'était le meilleur général des armées républicaines. Le suicide de Cassius va coûter cher à Brutus. Twelve kilometers away, at Neapolis, a sea battle was taking place at the same time as that on land. Antony and Octavian's fleet were suffering a shattering defeat. Brutus and Cassius's fleet closed off the sea to Antony for good, thus dispelling any hope of supplies and reinforcements. If the ships promised by Cleopatra had arrived, the outcome may possibly have been different. Cleopatra herself had in fact sailed from Alexandria at the head of a huge armada to bring help to Antony and Octavian. Would this about turn, imposed by the tempestuousness of the Mediterranean, be understood by the Caesareans? Cléopâtre est suspectée d'avoir eu une conduite équivoque, puisque ses renforts ne sont jamais arrivés aux Césariens. La tempête, survenue à point nommé, l'empêche d'être directement impliqué dans la lutte opposant césariens et républicains. Pour l'instant, Cléopâtre ignore la victoire en demi-teinte des césariens. Antoine a battu Cassius, Brutus a battu Octavien, un partout. Mais elle sait que si les républicains sont battus, elle n'est pas pour autant à l'abri de tout danger. Peut-elle compter sur la clémence des héritiers de César À Rome, elle a connu Antoine, mais ignore tout d'Octavien. Accueillera-t-il avec bienveillance Césarion ou le verra-t-il comme un concurrent potentiel et un rival Elle doit attendre la fin de la lutte armée pour le savoir. La mort va tout comme nous. Nous malus que la tribu est. Melius. Interna gloria sit César. Unus verus. This great military feat established Antony as the true heir of Caesar. Ultimus Romanorum fut Cassius. Coneminem fortiorem urs unquam dignere poterit. Quem tassi clamum mundum curate, ne funeribus magnis, animi militum que ciderit. Casi milites te brute clam accusant, se cladem pudere itaque, iusa tua efficere minime cupiunt, que cum hostes, victores oderit. Rupsus pugnare cupiunt. Nostris hoc dicide. Clarissima victoria oge pugnatum esse, quae paene plena fuiset. Nisi nostri, cum hostes profligare possent, ut 
Quita huyan y castra, festinante, ardiripere, maluisat. Quita menostes, sumis in angustis, audiu resistere poterunt. Quo igitur, pacientius, perseverabimus, e o maior erib vitoria. Bruto ha ragione a raccomandare la pazienza ai suoi uomini. Se procedesse come forse vorrei, come vorrebbe a logorare l'esercito avversario, contando anche sull'appoggio della flotta che ha, eh, potrebbe, ancora, potrebbe, ancora vincere, potrebbe ancora vincere la battaglia, potrebbe ancora vincere la guerra oltre che la battaglia. To worsen the situation, every day Antony's legions took up position at sword's length to defy Brutus's troops with insults and provocations. Brutus felt alone, alone and deprived of Cassius. And yet, confident of his position, he delayed the final battle, which the Caesareans continuously provoked. Brutus a bien analysé la situation. Il voit bien que le camp césarien est en proie d'une part à la disette, d'autre part à, aux rigueurs euh, d'un automne exceptionnellement rigoureux. Euh, et tout cela fait qu'il euh, sait qu'il commence à les avoir à sa merci. On Antony and Octavian's camp, the situation had turned critical. Famine claimed victim after victim. Morale was at a low. Stomachs knotted. The troops had had enough of tramping through mud, and in the morning, they frequently had to break off the thin layer of ice that had formed on their fingers during the freezing night. Since losing access to the sea, supplies were few and far between. In Brutus's camp, Resources were inexhaustible. But although the situation appeared comfortable, his soldiers, desperate for revenge, were gradually drained by the constant waiting. To pacify them, Brutus fed them well, paid them double, and even offered armor in solid silver to his officers. L'autorità di Bruto nel campo sembra essere veramente, veramente al limite, al limite minimo, cioè. Bruto non riesce a controllare le sue truppe. Il 23 ottobre accetta la battaglia, accetta la battaglia decisiva. Eh, il malcontento all'interno del campo fra le truppe potrebbe produrre un, uh, un aumento, una crescita delle, delle diserzioni. L'esercito dei triunviri è, è in condizioni peggiori del suo da certi punti di vista. Nella realtà ha paura che venga scambiata per, per, per viltà la sua decisione di non combattere e alla fine eh, segue la volontà dell'esercito e accetta la, la battaglia campale. Sicut Pompeius Magnus, non imperator, sed imperatus, bellum, gesturus e seguideor. Cognamita est, in proelium rodeamus, signum Apollonisto. Codutinamus tegat. Brutus, at pugna muenit.
For three weeks, the Caesarian legions stood in formation. For three weeks, the Republicans refused battle. But finally, they decided to accept. The eagle from Antony's camp was the victor. Antony urged his troops into battle in customary fashion. According to the historian Appian, he said, Soldiers of Rome, the enemy is before us, those whom we have tried to draw out from behind their fortifications. Let none of you prefer untreatable and murderous hunger to enemy ramparts and bodies attainable through courage, the sword, and despair. Our situation is so bad that nothing can be postponed until tomorrow. It is today that will be decided either complete victory or death with honor. Thus, Philippi became a battlefield of ideas. On one side, Brutus and Cassius fighting for freedom and the Republic. And on the other, Antony and Octavian to uphold the work of Caesar and the might of Rome. A struggle between republicanism and monarchism. One of Brutus's top officers from Gaul surrendered to the enemy, forcing him to accept battle. Mos copiristis, at pugna me coegistis, cumanio more vincere possim. Quae spes, et mea, et vuestra, vobis non decienda est. Cum superiora, lobis no casunt, tuta queterga, tu minini quo loco ostis. Qui inter nos, et famen intersit. With the experience of many military campaigns behind him, Antony had a plan. Firstly, he would stretch out his right wing, forcing his adversary to do the same, and thus weakening the center of his battle formation. Secondly, Antony would take advantage of the gap to send his cavalry in to attack Brutus's center. Finally, all that would remain to be done was to surround Brutus's infantry with a pincer movement that would prove fatal to the enemy.
made reasonable headway into the Caesarian ranks, but his weakened center would not hold out much longer. It was time to remind his legionaries of the righteousness of their cause, the defense of the Republic. Aut Vittoria mea, Romanis libertatem red dead, aut mors, mi servitute liberavit, ketera tuta securaque sunt nisioc, utrum nos libertate vituri, an morituri simus. As the plain reddened with spilled blood, the hope of victory increased tenfold the strength and fervor of the Caesarian troops. The close combat was of an extreme violence, each man fighting toe-to-toe -to -toe with the same weapons. Appian tells us, one side fought for survival rather than victory, the other for victory, and to please a general who had forced them to fight against his will. The carnage and the howls of the dying were atrocious. Antony dispersed the Republicans, preventing them from regrouping. Brutus's troops capitulated under Antony's pressure. Miserere nobis, Caesar! Poignam petimus! Non ne Romani sumus? Fili juventu tam inspike! Corre egos tibus supplicibus concere edebeal. Aliquit tamen opportunum efficere possum. Tortibus consulemus Uter in Tegersi. <laughs> Diripite, milites! Ut promisum e! Quam praeda meriti estis. At the end of the second battle, Brutus just managed to flee into the hills, the result of being unable to impose himself on his legionaries. Antony's brilliant military strategy had brought about success. By striking at Cassius, he unmasked the weaknesses of Brutus, deprived of his precious allies' counsel. Thirty thousand men died in this civil war, the bloodiest in all antiquity. Armed with the same weapons, speaking the same language, they fought against countrymen, friends, and even brothers. In despair, Brutus took his own life, preferring death as a free man to the ignobility of capture. According to Plutarch, his dying words were, O wretched virtue, thou wert but a name, and yet I worshipped thee as real indeed, but now it seems thou wert but fortune's slave. With Brutus, the last flames of the senator's republic died out. His body was carried before the true architect of the victory. Cura 
Tunera i Lifiant. Cineres ma Tridentur. Konan plus Est. Kapus Prey, Kidite. Prama Maspartate. Kod Victoria, Nostrae Testimonio Sit. Antony and Octavian had too many other concerns to allow themselves to bask in glory. Caesar was finally avenged and their own power consolidated. The destiny of Rome had swept aside the Senator's Republic, weary after five centuries of existence, but peace had finally been restored. the people of Rome applauded this peace they had longed for. Crowned with glory, Octavian and Antony reaffirmed their power and divided the influential zones of the empire between them. The more unassuming Octavian took the west, while Antony, the true architect of victory, the east, the richest part of the empire, the capital of which was Alexandria. Cleopatra had no doubt that she would be taken to task by Antony over her absence from Philippi. Once again, she would worry about her son and her kingdom. Antony was well aware that Alexandria meant control over trade in the east and a crucial strategic base for any plans for expansion. Dominion over Egypt was a major concern for the Romans. Antony and Octavian had become the masters of the Mediterranean. The Roman Empire now had two heads. Would peace remain one of their ambitions? <laughs> <laughs> 